Did I ever tell you about the one time that we had to evacuate the building on a live stream? We started smelling smoke. And once the alarms went off, we raced down five flights of steps out the front door and across the street in the middle of a thunderstorm, only to find out that someone put their cup of noodles in the microwave without water and nearly burnt the building to the ground. Okay, so that didn't actually happen on a live stream, but it did happen my first week of college nearly 15 years ago. Fortunately for the fire department, sprinkler systems, and a whole bunch of safeguards, I'm still alive to tell the tale. Speaking of safeguards, Let's talk about the five best tips that I have to make sure that your next gig doesn't crash and burn. Tip number one, backups. I've received tons of comments and keyboard warriors on YouTube that question why I do things the way that I do. Often in my behind the scenes and my setups, you'll notice that I have two or sometimes three recordings. The last thing that you want is to lose a recording and then navigate telling the client all because you tried to take the simplest or cheapest route. Backup recordings, backup batteries, backup cables, backups. Tip number two, always have a contract. I would take a guess that probably 75% of the arguments between a video professional and a client could be resolved by referring back to a contract that clearly states your scope of work, who is getting paid what, and exactly what will be delivered to the client. It's not about covering your butt, that should be a given, but it's about being able to say, hey, Let's go back and review our initial agreement, and if that's in the scope of work, we'll make it happen. If it isn't, let's discuss what changes need to be made to the budget. Tip number three, conduct site surveys. Almost every problem I've ever encountered on a live stream was something that could easily have been predicted if we conducted a thorough site survey prior to event day. A good site survey meets with the client, the venue, and any IT that might need to be involved for a solid internet connection. It's also a really good opportunity to plan with the client where cameras will go and making sure that cables don't get in the way. Side note, sometimes hotels require you to wheel your cart of gear in through a service entrance. And they don't want carts going across the lobby floor. This is something that people rarely think about, but it comes up quite frequently on a site visit. Tip number four, surprise and delight. Anytime that I'm working with a new client, I always do my best to surprise them. So if they paid for us to bring two cameras, I'll bring three. If they paid for a three-man crew, I might bring an intern as a fourth. I'll always make sure to point it out to the client that we wanted to have an extra security blanket, and by having this add-on that we're gifting free of charge, it helps the client relax on what is usually a very stressful event day. Tip number five pack a go bag. This falls in line with the idea of having backups, but I highly recommend packing a separate bag that you bring with you, kind of like an emergency medical kit. This bag should have everything from additional USB-C to ethernet adapters to additional USB-C cables, cam link capture cards, just in case, ethernet cables, and more. For good measure, you should probably pack a phone charger with a cord and a USB battery bank. Maybe some extra solid state drives for recordings and SD cards, and any other little items that you find useful. Pro tip. Make sure to get yourself a mini roll of gaffers tape like this one and some spike tape for easily labeling things on the fly. I keep those with a few Sharpies with me on every shoot. As with all live streams, you'll learn a lot of lessons over time. It's important that you take everything in stride, keep calm when things aren't exactly going as planned, and adjust course quickly. I hope you're out there keeping busy. Make it a great week.